Hello and welcome to my Celica guide. This guide will break down the emblem ring Celica, and we're going to go over different things the emblem ring can do, as well as setups for the emblem ring and good classes and units for it. So let's jump into it. So what is Celica specifically useful for? She is one of the earlier emblem rings that you get, and she has a few unique aspects to her that can enable certain types of tactics. So the first thing she can do is she can give a mage damage increase by increasing their magic and by increasing their tome damage by using resonance. So resonance takes one point of health as long as you have a point of health to give and will scale your damage by two or three depending on how high your bond level is with Celica. She also has the favorite food ability which allows you to once per battle because you can only get one packed lunch per battle eat a packed lunch to instantly fill your engage meter. She has the echo ability, which allows you to cast a spell twice. So you can essentially double your attacks for half damage. Now this can be useful for triggering chain attacks or if you get bonus damage from standing next to a leer. So for example, if you attack twice, you would get the bonus damage twice. So as long as you have chain attacks or some external source of bonus damage, you can actually increase your damage by using Echo. And you also have to consider that Echo combines with Resonance so that every time you attack individually, your damage is scaled. So there's some combo potential here. She also has Warp Ragnarok, which allows you to teleport a pretty good distance and hit an enemy with a big spell. It's essentially like a dive ability or repositioning tool, but it's pretty powerful and it definitely helps you early game. Late game, it's not as good because of high enemy density, but it still has utility late game for being able to just dive something. Or if you're doing like a boss rush or something like that, like let's say you're doing like a warp, a warp strat where you're teleporting all of your dudes in to kill a boss, you can then also have the Celica user warp in on their own without being warped in as part of a group. So there's definitely some tactics there. And then finally, you have Holy Stance, which flips damage back on Corrupted. So if you take, you know, 10 damage, you'd flip 5 back. You still take the full damage, but you also just, you know, damage them in return. So this could be good on tanks or units that you expect to be getting hit a lot. And the levels for it, it scales from 10 to 30 to 50% based on the bond level. But it's still pretty useful. Celica also has three... Relics. She has Seraphim, which is an effective against Corrupted Tome that has decent speed, in other words, low weight. So if you use Seraphim with Echo, very often, if the user has high enough magic, they can one round two Corrupted enemies, which is pretty useful. At bond level 10, you get Recover, which is essentially a free super heal. Uh, the Recover staff in general heals for a lot, so this is more or less a full heal, aside from units that have insane health values. Uh, so this is pretty useful. And then, of course, you get Ragnarok at bond level 15. This is just kind of like a Bulganone type tome. It's generally heavier. It has decent hit and some crit. So it's not like the best thing. It's probably going to be worse than what you're using, to be honest. Like you can see the, the Bulganone plus three is outperforming this. So this is definitely the least useful thing. But having a full heal and an effective versus corrupted weapon is huge. This specifically helps because most of the end game is corrupted and this is when you get Celica back, so pretty useful. Celica's stat increases are in strength, magic, and res. Of those, really only the strength and magic are going to be relevant. She's definitely an attacking emblem, so increasing res, while it's kind of nice, is definitely not as high impact as strength or magic. So she can be run on non-magic units, but obviously the plus five magic at bond level 20 is best in my opinion. So here are her stats. So at level one, you have plus one strength and res, plus two magic. At bond level 13, this is when you start to see a huge increase. Uh, you have plus two strength, plus four magic, plus three res. And then at bond level 19, you have plus three strength, plus five magic, plus four res. So let's talk about Celica's Paralog. So Celica's Paralog, Forgotten Shrine, has essentially three repeat spawning enemies like three like commanders that spawn four enemies around them and they rush you on a ship and in terms of difficulty 
I would say it could be difficult if you're unprepared for it. You can use things like Bonded Shield and Corrin to mitigate the spam and then just clean up the enemies. You can also warp Ragnarok, or I'm sorry, you can warp units and attack those commanders. And once you kill them all, eventually Celica will rush you. So in terms of difficulty, like should you do this paralogue, you can honestly skip it. Uh, if you just plan on running Celica for the final few chapters, you don't need to do her paralogue. But if you want to do it, you totally can. Um, it's not the hardest one, as long as you have enemy phase units who can one round on counterattack, you can easily beat it. Bonded Shield will help you greatly, being able to dive the enemies that spawn the waves will greatly help. So the faster you can kill the waves, the better, or if you just want to use Makaya and just warp a team into where Celica's at and then just nuke her down, that's also good. Uh, but overall, it's not one of the best paralogues to do. Certain paralogues really matter because of the abilities you can unlock. So for example, Lucina, I would say, is one of the best paralogues to do. One, because it's easy. Uh, two, you get resources. Three, you get bonded shield dual support, which allows the bonder to basically be unhittable. So Celica doesn't really have like a huge value ability that you need to do her paralogue, but if you want to, you can. And it's just basically free experience. So who are good units for Celica? So it depends on the build you're running, but generally any magic unit or any unit that you want to dive with. So you can use Celica on, for example, let's say like a Griffin Knight Chloe, if you want her to just dive in. Now, if you're running Leaven Sword on Chloe or Flame Lance or some kind of magical weapon, you can get away with that because it scales based off of magic damage and Celica provides magic damage. So you can use Warp Ragnarok as an aggressive repositioning tool, as a dive tool. So any unit you want to dive on would be good with it, any magical unit. So for example, Ivy would be a good user. She does t typically want speed, so maybe there's better options for her because Ivy's kind of slower. But Hortensia could be okay on it if you want her to deal some damage. I usually have her on Micaiah. Uh, Anna could make use of Celica. Timera, she wants it, she wants other things, but she could use it to some degree. Sadal, he shouldn't really use this. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. Marin, I would skip it. Uh, Alacrist, he had, there's better options for him for sure. Saline would be a good Celica user. She's actually the first Celica user. She has decent bulk and can usually tank a single enemy during enemy phase, which is generally enough if you position well when warp Ragnaroking, if your team follows it up. Uh, she also benefits from strength and magic increase because she can use both weapon types, uh, physical and magical, on her unique class. Jade would be okay. She's not really that good of a unit. <laughs> Saphir would be so-so. Uh, Veil is a good user of Celica. If you just want Veil to go for big hits and just deal some damage, getting her that extra damage. Honestly, like for late game, I would say Celica is one of the least contested emblem rings. There's bet like Byleth is highly contested, uh, like things like Lynn, Erica, Corin. These are like highly contested things. Makaya, Celica can kind of just go on whichever mage needs it, generally speaking. And you can also use it for strength fixing. Getting plus three strength is okay. Uh, getting bond level 20 is expensive though, but generally any mage who wants the magic increase or even for some strength on a physical unit. Pandreo would be a good user of this. Pandreo is probably one of the best users of this because he has a passive that allows him to potentially be in a void tank. So if you build him to be in a void tank, he can warp Ragnarok in and at least have a decent chance of surviving. He also has pretty good bulk. Uh, Kagetsu, any enemy phase unit. So you could also throw in like a thief. So if you warp Ragnarok on an avoid tile, for example, you could put a thief in a position where now enemies are attacking that thief and the thief is, you know, evasion tanking while also dealing damage and surviving. So it's not like dangerous to do so. But pretty much any mage, mage wants it. Citrine, even if you're just running like Dire Thunder, she could still make use of it. Though she is very frail, so probably don't warp Ragnarok too far into the enemy position. So what are good classes for the Emblem Ring? I would say Lindworm is pretty good, like any magical class. So Lindworm, Sage, Mage Knight, 
All of these are magical carries that use tomes to some degree. Uh, you also have to consider that resonance only works with tomes. So if you were looking to boost the magical damage of, let's say, like a Levin Sword, for example, you could do that with Sword Power, but you can't do that with Resonance. So unfortunately, it's Tome-based. Uh, arguably, Tomes aren't as good as things like Levin Sword because of Sword Power and because of the Well update. So you can easily get like Sword Power 5 and have your Levin Sword hit plus 10 damage, which is way better than Resonance could ever dream of being. Uh, but it's free if you're just running Celica as an Emblem Ring. So she wants Tome users, so anything that's good on Tomes. A uh, High Priest, to some degree, could be okay on it. But I would say Sage, Mage Knight on Tomes, Linworm, and maybe Slepnir Rider if you want to try to damage boost Hortensia. Hortensia's big issue, though, on Slepnir Rider is that she only has access to things like Elfire and Elwind. Like, she can't use, like, Bulganone. You would be able to use the other Tomes, however. So you could use Ragnarok. If you have bond level 15 which would give her access to a higher damage tome because hortensia on her main class does not have access to those so that is one huge advantage that only hortensia would really get because everyone else would just be using you know like bolganone and stuff like that which is better than ragnarok let's talk about the type bonuses for the different classes so dragon type gets range plus one when using echo so you essentially become a siege tome user and then warp ragnarok also gets range plus one so i'll just demo that really quick so if we go to echo you can see that i now can attack at three range and veil vale is a tome user who can take advantage of this a leer can also use this because you do get tomes so as long as you're engaged you get tome access because you can use seraphim and ragnarok if your bond level is high enough and then the warp ragnarok range is also increased so the range of the attack is increased not the warp so the warp range is pretty high, but you can see that she can now hit at three range. So that's dragon type. The bonuses on mystical for Celica are plus 10% damage on Echo and plus 20% damage on Warp Ragnarok. So it's damage scaling. And I'm also going to demo some damage increases. So let's say we engage and I attack this enemy with Seraphim. So right now I deal 25 damage. I basically die when he hits me, but I deal 25 damage and then I trigger one chain attack. Now if I do the same thing, but I echo, because of the damage increase and resonance, I will actually deal five more damage overall. So 25 damage for a single hit versus 15, but twice for hitting twice. And also I'm triggering the chain attack twice. So this is a perfect example of how you can trigger multiple chain attacks. So if you have like three or four chain attacks set up, Echo is just a chain attack enabler. And also, if you're standing next to a Leer, you do get bonus damage, but the way it calculates it is weird. So I did 15 damage with Echo Seraphim previously, and now I'm boosted to 16. So you don't get the plus three damage. You essentially get plus 1.5, and then it rounds down to 16 in this case. So it'd be plus one damage. So when you're echoing, you do get plus one damage from a Leer, but it rounds down. And one thing I am curious to see is if Veil gives plus one damage, so let's see how this affects that. If I get 17 damage or not. I do! Okay, so if you're next to Veil and a Leer while echoing, you do get plus two damage total, but you need to be next to both of them. Because what's happening is you're getting plus three damage, but it's being halved, so you're getting plus 1.5 damage. And then from Veil, you're getting plus one, which is halved. In, in other words, plus 0.5, and then it adds it together, so you get plus two total. The other two class types that benefit from Celica in terms of type bonus are Flyer and Cavalry. So Flyer gets Warp Range plus five, so Warp Distance plus five, and Cavalry gets Warp Distance plus two. So of the two of them, Flyer gets the longer range Warp. So I'm going to demo that. So let's say we want to attack something across the map. <laughs> you can with warp. Look at it, look at the range on this thing. This is this is what plus 5 range looks like. Now obviously this is suicidal to do, but you can see the diving potential. This is mostly good for killing bosses and diving bosses so that this particular unit can contribute to damage while also extending its reach. 
but you would want a unit with good magic to benefit from the fact that Warp Ragnarok is magic respecting, magic damage, magic base damage. Let's talk about Celica's passives and which are worth getting. All right, so you have the magic line, which scales magic damage. This is one of the only ways you can scale, one of the few ways you can scale magic damage. It's quite expensive. Getting magic plus two is quite cheap. If it was a two to one ratio of plus two magic per 1000 SP, I would say it is worth it, but because it eventually becomes one to one, you start to lose out on you know raw damage so if we're comparing magic plus to something like lance power lance power four gives you plus 10 damage and this is absolutely crazy and arguably breaks the game but you can still get magic plus five for 5k which is still useful and it works across multiple things so like lance power is limited to lances magic universally boosts magic damage so if you're using hybrid builds like tomes and leaven sword and things like this flame lance and so on it'll boost all of that. So in that way, it's better than just like a power ability. But I would say specialization is key in this game. But magic plus five is definitely worth it. If you get tier four wells consistently, where you just drop in items to hit tier four well, you should be able to afford this on your power carry mages, like your hard carry mages. So it isn't bad. Uh, next we have holy stance, which actually seems like it's really good on tanks. Now, you need it to be on tanks who take some damage, so they can't take zero damage, and they have to get hit. So if it's on an avoid tank, and they never get hit, it's bad. If it's on a tank who has too high of defense, and they take like one or two damage, it's bad. But if you're on a tank, or even a unit, who regularly gets hit a few times and survives consistently, and you want to flip some damage back on the enemies... This is pretty good, 50% damage. So if you take like, let's say three enemies hit you for 10 damage, you flipped 15 damage if you get Holy Stance plus plus. This could be good on specific tanks, but not on things like general, unless the enemies can still hit the general for decent damage. Uh, now, if you take like 20 damage or 30 damage, like if you just get hit once or twice, if you set it up, so let's say two enemies attack you, you chain guard the first one, and then the second one hits you for like 30 damage, you're flipping 15 damage. This could be good on bruisers, uh, this needs play tested a lot, but the, the the potential is there. I don't think I've really seen people run this, but there's definitely a lot of potential here because all of the end game enemies are corrupted, and end game is arguably the hardest point in the game, and you get her as you enter the end game. So this does have huge potential. Uh, next we have resonance. So this scales your tome damage, and you lose health when attacking. Uh, funny enough, this essentially does what magic plus two does. Someone said in my comments that it's true damage. It might be true damage. Uh, even if it is true damage, I would still rather have magic plus two. It, first of all, it's cheaper. Second of all, it always works. And also it doesn't re reduce your health. Now you can take advantage of the resonance health reduction for triggering certain abilities or, or running something like wrath. So if you want to set up wrath safely on a mage who can't get hit, that would be a use case for it. Now you're going to have to attack like 20 times before you start seeing your health go down. But you could get your damage up, you could set up crits. You can also enable things like on Citrine when she can heal herself to AoE heal people. But I think it only AoE heals for the amount she heals herself. But the damage increase on this is okay. If you want to max out Tome damage and you run tier 4 well consistently to get a ton of SP, you could run Magic plus 5 and Resonance plus, And you're looking at plus 8 damage with your Tomes, which is pretty good. That's, that's like the best way to boost your magic damage if you run both of them. Usually Tome users need some kind of speed fixing, but if you're running Pandreo, you could probably get away with that. All right, and then we have Tome Precision. So Tome Precision is interesting in that it grants hit and avoid. Honestly, I think the reason you would use this is the avoid. However, there's better things for avoid. So if you're trying to make an avoid tank, Marth is just better. Now he's super late game, whereas Celica is like early late game, but it's still late game. So if you want to run this on Pandreo, for example, to scale his avoid, you could. He doesn't have accuracy problems because of his passive, but this could kind of scale with his passive to like complement it. Uh, some mages have accuracy issues like Ivy, so she could kind of benefit from this. Arguably engravings would be better. So this is okay. It has some situational uses, but if you're going for avoid tanking, spending the extra, what is it? 
1k, that's nothing. Like an extra 1k for plus 30 avoid versus 2k for plus 15 avoid. I would say Martha's, Martha's avoid is just better for dodge tanking, especially if you want to throw it on Pandreo. Whereas this isn't bad and it's not a bad option, but you still have to get high bond level and, you know, spend 2k SP and take a slot. So the slots, you only have two of them. To wrap up, let's talk about Celica's engraving. So a lot of people don't like this engraving. I think it does have its use cases. If you run DLC, I can see how it's lackluster. If you're only on base game though, there's only so many engravings. So here's what it does. Minus one might, minus one weight, plus 50 dodge. So there's, in my opinion, two use cases for this. The first one is crit avoidance. So if you have a unit who has bad luck that has pretty high incoming crit rates, you can throw this on that unit's weapon. Or if you want to have a unit who can just walk up to enemies with killer weapons and just ignore their killer weapon effect, and smack them and have no risk of getting crit, this is fantastic. So early game, this is good against Kagetsu because he has high crit. This is good against Rosado, who has the killer axe on chapter 10. And it's also good on any enemy. Uh, so like all of the enemies who get Leaf, who has killer axe on chapter 11, those are created as the chapter goes on. This is good at crit mitigation. This is its number one use case. Its other use case, secondary use case, is weight fixing. So weight fixing is reducing a weapon's weight so that you can enable doubling on units with low build. Now you do lose a point of might, but doubling is double damage. So if this is the difference between doubling or not consistently, it's worth it. And you also get the crit mitigation. So this is good on like 11 sword for Saline, for Anna. It's good on Bolganone for Saline, Anna, Ivy. It's good on silver and steel weapons for certain units who don't have the build to wield them effectively. So you do lose a point of damage, but you have to think about it in terms of reducing the weight and also in terms of crit avoidance. Uh, but that's it for my Selka guide. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or found this useful. Feel free to drop a comment if you feel like I missed anything, and I'll see you in the next one.